Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you very much for being with me again today. Strange development? No, it just follows the course that we've been talking about for some time, which is Russia, China, and then the Al Capone's plantation some here. So these guys will be the nucleus of the new organization on the structure of BRICS. Organization in terms of uh, alliance. I don't think they will come and give it a name like NATO or something like this. No, it's going to be uh, the alternative to the other side, which is always good. You don't have, you don't want to have only one voice. Uh, you want to have as many as, uh, as, as you can. Why? Diversity of expression, of thoughts, of ideas, right? And then you have a debate, an open exchange and a public forum. That's the way it should be. Unless the, some people decide that, hey, we don't like what you say, we're going to make it uh, illegal or we're just going to destroy you. So you can't talk and people cannot hear about what you have to say. So we have here uh, Russia's foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, going for a work trip to Beijing to meet his good friend, Mr. Wang Yi, the foreign minister of, the, of China. Let's leave it that way. So we have three articles. And they will have quite different one from the Russians, one from the Chinese, and the other one from the, well, let's say, Reuters. I don't know who those guys are. I mean, anyway. So it's three slightly different takes on why would Lavrov go to Beijing? Well, supposedly to discuss um, the war in Ukraine, the peace plan. Remember the Chinese provided a peace, a peace plan for the... Uh, solving the Ukrainian conflict and Zelensky Stein immediately said no 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 that's garbage only my peace plan is the good one and why because they said you can say that this is what you should say and we're gonna have a little conference in Switzerland they are working hard to have that conference peace conference regarding uh, the garbage in Ukraine instead of just saying US stop uh, talk to the Russians tell the weasels to stand down and everything will be done in 48 hours. I gave it 48 hours because, you know, to have, have to slap around a few garbage uh, that will oppose that. Why? Because they make too much money. <laughs> Why would they just release that? No, I want to make money, right? Right. So, profits, profiteers, Sputnik. Seven hours ago, today on the 7th of April 2024, Russia's Lavrov to visit China on April 8 and 9 for talks with Chinese counterpart. This is Moscow. This is one. I'm just going to read the titles of the three articles and then we're going to read uh, some excerpts out of it. Second one, the South China Morning Post. Russia's Lavrov, who will visit China soon, calls Beijing peace plan for Ukraine reasonable. And the third one, Reuters, April 7, 2024. Russia's Lavrov to visit China to discuss Ukraine war. All right, let's go with the uh, Russians first. Now, that's a foreign minister, that's a diplomat, okay? Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov will visit China from April 8 to 9 to hold talks with its Chinese counterpart Wang Yi and discuss bilateral and international issues. So you already have a diversity of uh, subjects, not only this, okay? On April 8 and 9, official 8 to 9, the official visit of Russian Foreign Minister Sergei uh, Lavrov v. <laughs> to China will take place and will include negotiations with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Negotiations. The ministry said in a statement, I don't think the Russians will negotiate with China the war in Ukraine. Correct? I think so. Correct. Why? Because China doesn't have much leverage. The foreign ministers will discuss, a, United States has the biggest, let's put it this way. The foreign ministers will discuss a wide range of issues related to bilateral cooperation and interaction in the international arena, focusing in particular on joint work within the United Nations, BRICS, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, G20, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation, and other multilateral mechanisms and forums, the statement read. This is what Reuters give us. You can say, well, it's just pointed towards that direction. <laughs> you see, these guys 
give you here a list more important more important than everything these guys are talking united nations BRICS, shanghai cooperation organization g20 asia pacific blah, blah. but anyway this is this is how these guys are giving us the news just so you know this is you can compare and contrast how these guys what how they pick the subjects we need to know about it okay the talks will also include a thorough exchange of views on a number of topics, uh, topical and regional issues, including the Ukrainian crisis and the situation in the Asia Pacific region. That is, you know, Taiwan and North Korea and not only. Got it? So at the end, the last sentence, they mentioned Ukraine here with this one. They mentioned it uh, anywhere else? Where? Here? No. Let's see what Reuters says. Reuters, Russia's Lavrov to visit Panama Pam. Russian Foreign, Foreign Minister Lavrov will visit China on Monday to discuss the war in Ukraine and the deepening partnership between Moscow and Beijing. Correct. That's more important than the Ukraine war, I think. Talks between Lavrov and Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, who, who extended the invitation to the Russian minister, will include bilateral cooperation as well as hot topics such as the crisis in Ukraine and the Asia Pacific, the Russian foreign minister said. They give us little information, uh, little by little. Reuters reported last month that Russian President Putin will travel to China in May for talks with Chinese President Xi Jinping in what could be the Kremlin's chief's first overseas trips of his new presidential term. China and Russia declared a no-limits partnership in February 2022, when Putin visited Beijing just days before he sent tens of thousands of The United States cost, cast China as the biggest competitor and Russia as its biggest nation state threat. Yeah, you buy that? Well, could be true. I mean, partly is true. But sometimes you can create problems. And then when the other side reacts, you say, see, I told you. Like, for instance, Japan in the Second World War. Yes, Japan attacked the territory of um, Hawaii, which was a territory of the United States of America at that point. Not a state, correct? Destroyed uh, most of uh, the fleet over there, of the American fleet. And they say, well, unprovoked, because they're just crazy. Just imperialistic uh, Japan, which was partly true. But is that why they attacked? Is that why? Or someone else pushed them to that position. Ah, what are you talking about? I mean, well, I dare you to go and read about it. About the sanctions, the restrictions, the red lines the United States government, who saw Japan as a competitor in East Asia, imposed to Japan. And Japan said, what are you talking about? I can't go do business over there? No. I can't buy those, from, uh, those resources from there? I can't go over there? No. Why? Because we say so. And when these guys did what they did, eh, see everybody? It's the same shit, the same shit. I come closer to you and you say, hey, wait, 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 back off, back off. No, I can't come closer to you. And when I smack you, see everybody, see? I told you he's a bully who came towards Russia. Russia came towards NATO or NATO came towards Russia? NATO slash United States of America. It's not NATO, it's like, a, oh, countries. No, it's United States of America uses uh, the frame of NATO the countries to uh, win legitimacy and to, like a pack, like a gang, a gang. A gang always has a leader who smacks everybody around. It's not like a gang with two, two leaders. I haven't heard of anything like that. A gang with two leaders. Eventually, one will pop, 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 pee, boo, boo, the other one. So let's see what else these guys are saying. Now, again, Putin and Xi share a broad worldview which sees the West as decadent and in decline, just as Chinese challenges US supremacy in everything from quantum computing and synthetic biology to espionage and hard military power. Okay, so that's not good news, guys. So sometimes some people say, well, you know, he cheated on her or she cheated on him. He, you know, she cheated. She's the, well, what happened? Ah, uh, you know, I don't know. She cheated on him or he cheated. Well, the context matters. Why? It's always why and it's always answers. So same here. Why did China and Russia got so close? 
as a reaction to what? The bully boy. The bully boy, owned by the little thing in, you know, by Mediterranean Sea. Yeah, that's Cyprus, exactly. <laughs> All right, my friends. These guys are getting even closer. They, uh, how should I put it? Uh, they harmonize their relations. And we'll see how strong they are, uh, the relationship between the two countries is. And it is because uh, how much pressure the Americans put on uh, the Chinese after the Russians invaded and provoked Ukraine, because that's the way they are, you know. Uh, and this guy said, no, we're not going to cave in, my friends. We're strong, we're independent. And besides, if Russia falls, we're fucked. Because if Russia falls and the interests that own America will take over the Russian... Uh, uh, resources, who do you think is going to be biggest loser? China, uh, Russia and China. Why? Because this guy is going to say, okay, now we got this. What do you think will happen with the Chinese economy? Book got China by the balls. So therefore, China has Russia with the resources and military and, you know, buffer zone against these guys over there, territorial. And Russia has China as, you know, uh, helper in the economy do business together and militarily, strategically. Why? The idiotic answer here is because they're bad. Well, you know, that's for toddlers, for baboons. And they buy it. They buy it. Because when you ask them, hey, what do you mean? I, 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 I remember an incident. I think I mentioned it once before here. When I was in my office, let's put it this way. And uh, one woman, she just was just promoted as a supervisor at that point. She came and uh, I had a picture of um, Putin in my office, among other others. And uh, she asked me, why do you keep a... Uh, and this was more than 10 years ago. Or about 10 years ago, actually. 10 years ago, about 10 years ago. And she asked me, why do you keep a criminal's picture over there? And I said, why is he a criminal? Everybody knows. Everybody knows you're a whore. I didn't say that, but if we go by everybody knows, you know, where do we end? So then I asked her, okay, what do you know about Russia? I know he's a criminal. Who told you that? Well, all the, all the media, all of it says it. So I said, okay, what's the population of Russia? Didn't know shit. <laughs> I said, tell me one Russian composer. Shit. I said, what is the political... Uh, he's, a, he's a dictator. I said, what's the political system over there. He's a dictator. How do you know that? How many branches of government are over there? Do they have a parliament? Don't they have a parliament? Oh, he got elected again. He's the, why, how did he get elected? So he's a democracy? No. Who told you so? So he, he, all she knew was what she heard on CNN, MSNBC, and the garbage over there. That's all. She didn't know any hard evidence. Nothing. Just so you know. So, yeah. And I said, well, actually, you don't know anything about this guy or about Russia itself. But you come and tell me and you accuse me of having a criminal in a picture. I said, I have that guy over there, too. I have that guy over there, too. I have that guy over there, too. But you don't know anything about those guys. Why? Because the mass media focused on this guy at this point. The same here. People might know certain things just because they watch garbage. And they are, they're satisfied. The problem is they watch one garbage and they have one worldview. And they don't open. Hey, well, let me see. Let me listen to these guys. Do I know anything about the subject? I mean, if you think that the mass media will educate you, pss, no, they just propagandize you. They shape your opinion, your worldview. Like someone said in the 1920s. The media, the newspapers, are the school for the adults. So when you're a child, you got the government writing the curriculum for you. So you're going to learn garbage that you're not supposed to learn. Remember, the school should teach you how to add, how to read, um, and a little bit of information here and there, but not tell you to do this or to like that, or to, to this week is the trans day, the week this week is ba 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 day. It's not your business. Fuck off. But anyway, this is how deep we got in trouble. So after they, you graduate and you get out of that, the mass media takes the role of the school, which is the adult school for the adults. They're going to shape your worldview on your economy, on your political system, on international issues. And who's in charge of that? Oh, we got a free mass media. Not even that. So the same here. 
these guys are gonna give you whatever they gonna and the same thing is everywhere don't get me wrong don't, oh russia is different no uh, russia how should i put it uh, coincidentally has a worldview that still stands where we used to be we the western world used to be about 50 or 60 or 70 years ago maybe something like that that's the only thing the, the russians don't want to let go they want equity inclusion diversity and all the garbage and it's a problem these guys tell the russians how they should actually rule their world and their lives but the more more than that is the interest financial economic interest those are the things that dictate and they're going to create problems wherever they want in order to conquer control and suck the blood of the population uh, ours but at least they let us you know talk to a certain extent work earn some money invest have some free time vacations if we can afford and all that i think it was 60 percent of the americans 60 or 80 percent of the americans could not provide 400 dollars if i remember correctly 400 dollars in an emergency from their pocket they had to borrow it now do you call that a rich country do you call it a rich population <laughs> no that's not rich it's not rich for me personally if i don't save money is like desperation well i like to pay cash i like to pay the whole amount if i can obviously you can buy a house 300 400 500 dollars cash you have to stay whatever in an apartment for 10 years or something i'm just saying but here it is my friends when they say oh we're a rich rich society yeah rich society you eat something that smells like like food looks like food and tastes like food sometimes you don't even know what the fuck you're eating over there so here it is my friends they're gonna be it's good diversity is good it's our strength we're told so it's good diverse uh, you know this club here and a club right here a club right here instead of having i know so-called pax americana we don't want to have that one why look back from 1991 to 2024 and see pax americana how many wars uh, pax americana provided except donald trump who was the warmonger the bad guy the, my friends this is a game over there and unfortunately with uh, severe consequences for all of us thank you very much. not only for all of us for our children and so on things will go better we have to uh we have to okay all right got the message thank you very much for being with me again today stay strong stay smart look for the truth and be just